Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Few experiences rival stepping into an anechoic chamber, and the United States military owns the largest one in the world. An anechoic chamber is essentially a room that you can do testing for radio frequencies that is fully isolated from the outside world. The chamber's walls, ceilings, and floor are often covered with materials that absorb sound waves almost completely. This prevents the sound from bouncing off surfaces and causing echoes. The goal is to create an environment with minimal background noise. This has plenty of applications in civilian settings, as well as military uses for anechoic technology. The largest anechoic chamber in the world is located at Edwards Air Force Base in California. This particular site is often used for aerospace testing and boasts a number of facilities, including wind tunnels, test ranges, and repair hangars. The Benefield Anechoic Facility is a specialized chamber used for testing and evaluating aircraft communication and electronic systems. Because of the anti-reflective qualities of the chamber, engineers and technicians can assess the performance and susceptibility of electronic systems radar systems, and communication equipment without worrying about interfering with electromagnetic signals. The chamber is also designed to simulate real-world conditions and help identify any issues or vulnerabilities that must be addressed with the aircraft. Benefield was originally born to test the B-1 Bomber, a strategic swept-wind aircraft that entered service in 1986. Over the years, the facility has been used to test dozens of B-1 Lancers, as well as many other aircraft. Its newest and most important addition is an updated 80-foot turntable, which can offer precise, repeatable movements for a wide range of essential tests. Radio frequency energy is all around us, powering much of the technology we use in our daily lives. The same goes for the military, where RFE facilitates communication between individuals, equipment, and aircraft. In order to prevent bad actors from exploiting military radio signals, the United States often utilizes the Benefield Anechoic facility to test aircraft and equipment that might be susceptible to electronic warfare. To that end, 
it can both cancel and generate electromagnetic threats to see how the vehicle in question performs. The facility is 250 feet wide, 264 feet long, and 70 feet high. Aside from the turntable, it features two 40-ton hoists to lift fighter aircraft for more efficient testing of smaller planes and helicopters. Commercial aerospace companies also use anechoic chambers to test their aircraft and other designs. One example is the Lieber Chamber at Lieber Aerospace, Toulouse in France. The facility is often utilized for acoustic testing by companies of all types and backgrounds. Meanwhile, other parts of the same facility can be used to simulate vibration and other physical threats to product performance. Of course, Aerodynamics is also extremely important when dealing with aerospace design and engineering. From the very early days of aviation, the best way to evaluate the behavior of aircraft, spacecraft, and other aerodynamic designs in a controlled environment is to use a wind tunnel. These massive facilities help simulate the effects of air moving over objects at various speeds, angles, and conditions, allowing engineers and researchers to gather valuable data without needing actual flight. The largest wind tunnel in the world is at NASA's Ames Research Center in California. Known as the National Full Scale Aerodynamic Complex, or NFAC, the tunnel is 80 feet by 120 feet and capable of reproducing air speeds of up to 120 miles per hour. Most wind tunnel facilities use highly accurate models when attempting to evaluate how new aircraft might behave in flight. A great example of this took place when Boeing was designing its Boeing 737 MAX, which featured a new type of winglet. The winglet was designed to reduce fuel consumption, but ensuring it would perform as expected required extensive training before any planes were actually manufactured. The final model was put into Boeing's transonic wind tunnel testing lab multiple times. As one of the world's largest aircraft manufacturers, Boeing has many resources at its disposal when it comes to testing new and older aircraft. This includes a state-of-the-art model shop, 
where techs can design wind tunnel models that are accurate down to the millimeter. Models not only allow for easier testing, but they save loads of time, energy, and money by allowing Boeing to do hundreds of hours of accurate testing before a single full-size plane is manufactured. Though extensive testing is required for any plane or helicopter, such investigatory efforts are multiplied when it comes to vehicles meant to travel to space and back. This has only become more and more evident as space travel has moved from the government domain into the private sector. Blue Origin is a Washington-based firm looking to make commercial space travel a reality. In recent years, the company has engaged in several highly sophisticated tests, including hot fire tests of their BE-7 thrust chamber assembly. Hot fire tests involve igniting and operating the engine on the ground in a controlled environment to simulate its performance in actual flight conditions. The term hot fire refers to the fact that the engine is firing with live propellant, generating high temperatures and intense heat. Such tests are integral to allowing engineers to validate the performance of the engine and its components, such as combustion chambers, nozzles, injectors, and turboprops. This helps ensure the engine can generate the necessary thrust and operate efficiently. The main rocket engine used by Blue Origin is the BE-4, a reusable liquid oxygen, liquefied natural gas engine capable of producing up to 550,000 pounds of thrust. It is specifically designed to be used with United Launch Alliance's upgraded Atlas V and Vulcan Centaur rockets to actually put Blue Origin vehicles into space. The best way to ensure the engine can perform as expected is to put it through a battery of takeoff and landing tests. These are much more expensive than mere hot fire tests as they necessitate actually performing a full launch with everything but the passengers. Blue Origin does have some high profile competition in the race to bring commercial space flight to the masses. Elon Musk's SpaceX. That company has already managed to execute several successful takeoff and landing tests using its Falcon 9 rocket. Since its introduction and after a series of successful demonstrations, the Falcon 9 has become the first commercial rocket to launch humans into orbit as well as the only rocket certified to bring people to the International Space Station. SpaceX's rockets are known across the industry as being some of the most advanced in the world.
The company's CRS-8 model, first introduced in 2016, has demonstrated its ability to land on small drone ships in the middle of the ocean several times. This fully automated process is incredibly accurate and very safe, especially considering the sheer number of variables involved. That said, SpaceX and other companies have not been failure-free. As with the space programs that came before, numerous SpaceX rockets and boosters have been lost at sea or blown up during takeoff and landing. Though people are still eager to try commercial spaceflight, this footage is an important reminder that regular trips out of our atmosphere might still be a few years away. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.